Welcome, uh, everybody, to this uh, joint uh, event of the uh, Central Asia Caucasus Institute uh, and the Silk Road Studies Program. Uh, institutions that have been publishing jointly for a very long time, over 15 years now, but whose events have historically been separate for geographic reasons that no longer exist uh, in the conditions we find ourselves in. Uh, I would like to particularly um, um, Welcome here in our office is Aida Yermekalieva. She's a charge d'affaires of uh, the Embassy of Kazakhstan in Stockholm, who is our partner in organizing this event. Welcome. Uh, and in a moment, uh, Ms. Yermekalieva will introduce our, our speaker, our main speaker, uh, Ambassador Kaliev. Uh, by way of introduction, I would like to uh, note that this institute has long uh, as far, uh, since I joined the Institute back in uh, 21 years ago, and even prior to that, made the argument that Afghanistan is a Central Asian country. Uh, that is not the way it appears on Soviet maps, of course, and unfortunately, even today, our understanding of, uh, of, uh, re of regions, our drawing of geographic boundaries, and indeed of bureaucratic boundaries in our governments and international organizations still reflect these Soviet era boundaries. But obviously, historically, Afghanistan was an important part, even as Professor Starr would argue, the heart of Central Asia uh, in cultural, economic, and political terms closely linked with the five post-Soviet republics of Central Asia. Now, uh, when the Central Asian states gained independence um, 30 years ago, this uh, Afghanistan did not look necessarily particularly appealing. Uh, it had already suffered a long civil war. Uh, it was a hub of drug trafficking. The Taliban movement was just being born. And Afghanistan was largely seen as a problem, something to be avoided. Uh, and this perspective lasted a long time and in certain surrounding powers remains the predominant point of view on Afghanistan or perspective on Afghanistan. And that remained the case even though everybody in Central Asia realized that Afghanistan was the closest link to the high seas for the five post-Soviet Central Asian states. Uh, but gradually this perspective has changed. As the Central Asian states got more uh, secure in their sovereignty, they've begun to reassess their views on Afghanistan and not only in theory, very much also in practice. And I would argue that today, they see themselves as countries that have an agency to help change Afghanistan for the better rather than just insulate themselves from Afghanistan. And that is the spirit of our events today. Um, it, it will also, uh, we are uh, very much hoping, be followed by similar events discussing other Central Asian uh, states um, and their relationships with Afghanistan and their perspectives on Afghanistan. Um, now, obviously, Kazakhstan is not alone. In this matter, Uzbekistan is involved in many issues, including taking a direct role in the peace talks uh, in Afghanistan. Turkmenistan is involved, not least in the construction of a gas pipeline that will hopefully bring Central Asian resources to South Asia. Uh, and it should be noted they hosted a Taliban delegation very recently. Now, Kazakhstan does not border Afghanistan, but it also plays an important role. And I would like to recall that back in 2006, our institute organized a conference on Afghanistan in Kabul, uh, at which then Foreign Minister Qasim Jomar Tokayev took part and joined this conference and made a keynote address to it. And of course, today he is the president of Kazakhstan. Uh, and that is my uh, introduction to this uh, seminar. I will now hand the floor to um, uh, Ms. Yermek Aliyeva to introduce our speaker. Hello, dear audience. Uh, let me introduce our main guest, um, Ambassador Kaliyev. He has 20 years experience of diplomatic service and he used to work in the UK, US, India, Romania, and he was an ambassador to South Africa. So he's well, well experienced diplomat and he's a, now he's a special representative of our president on Afghanistan issues. So the floor is yours, ambassador, your excellency. Thank you, Professor Cornell, dear Dr. Starr, Again, really glad to see you after many years. Um, let me start uh, first uh, uh, from uh, describing the uh, Kazakhstan's uh, stance position towards the situation in Afghanistan. We consider Afghanistan as a, uh, an important uh, regional partner. Uh, yes, Kazakhstan obtained independence when the uh, 
civil war back in Afghanistan was on the peak. And this is uh, uh, determined our so further so the policy towards Afghanistan. Uh, we do support, uh, so of course, on the, based on the principle, UN principles, yeah, sovereignty, independence, uh, territorial integrity of any country, including Afghanistan. This was our mes first message to Afghanistan. And we opened our embassy in Kabul uh, in the 90s, in the beginning of the 90s. Uh, from that period of time, so of course, we watched very closely the situation and uh, gradually, step by step, we understood that the situation in Afghanistan uh, became the major, so the key uh, regional uh, problem in sphere of security. Of course, Dr. Corn already mentioned about the drug trafficking. So another so issue was, of course, the spread of religious extremism. Uh, for Kazakhstan, as a part of Islamic Ummah, it's uh, also an important issue. Just recently, uh, we experienced, uh, we, 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 we brought back home more than 700 so, uh, people from Syria and Iraq. Those who have been so the member of uh, Islamic State, and these people are it's, it's uh, so being at home. Part of them is, so are, are uh, in the court of law, so they will be sentenced for the uh, participation in the terrorist activity. And uh, you see uh, the surroundings, uh, so environment in Kazakhstan uh, is situated so being so located between regional superpowers with a very unstable situation in the south. Uh, so it's uh, our, these issues of the regional security, uh, national security is our uh, prime concern. Uh, during our so non-permanent uh, membership uh, in the UN Security Council in 2017 and 2018, Kazakhstan proposed the creation of regional model of peace and cooperation in the Central Asian region, focusing on addressing the root causes of the conflict in Afghanistan and preventing the spread of terrorism and violent extremism. The idea was to keep Afghanistan on the track to give them the feel that they, they are part of big central issue, that, that we, is it, uh, we do not abandon it. So we, 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 we do uh, remember the problem, this country faced with. And um, there was, uh, in 2017, the, uh, the ministerial debate was held uh, again. So <clears throat> with the Security Council on the theme of building a regional partnership with Afghanistan, and central uh, on as a model for independence of security and development. Based on these uh, so messages of Kazakhstan, uh, so uh, policy towards Afghanistan based on two uh, so pillars. First of all, it's trade. So of course, we can't. We are not talking about something really so huge, so uh, so amounts, uh, because uh, so we mostly so uh, export. Uh, so ninety percent of. Uh, grain and uh, wheat concerned by in Afghanistan, it uh, has a Kazakhstan origin. Same way I kept talking about the liquid gas, uh, some construction materials, some uh, machinery, equipment, and so on. So, so just uh, last year, 2020, so the uh, total uh, uh, trade volume was about half a billion dollars. And mostly it's uh, grain and wheat from Kazakhstan to Afghanistan. The second issue, uh, so of course, it's uh, following the requests from Afghanistan as well, and backed by the UN, uh, is humanitarian assistance. Um, a few years ago, so uh, President, the period of time, the first President of Kazakhstan, Yad Basin, also upon his wife, uh, proposed to. Uh, offered uh, the grants for 1,000 Afghan students uh, at, Kazakh, uh, at the leading Kazakh universities. Um, this program is already so, is, uh, almost completed, and we are really proud that uh, a lot of so, uh, young Afghan so, citizens got higher education in, in, in Kazakhstan. It's mostly technical and agricultural and medical uh, facilities. Um, Starting from 2019, so Kazakhstan with uh, the, uh, the 
uh, with the support of the European Union. We have another program, educational program, but it's uh, a very uh, specific one. It's just for Afghan uh, young uh, women. It's uh, every year we accept 50 young uh, students, uh, female students from Afghanistan at, in, in, our, in, in our universities, uh, Kazakh National Medical Uni Academy, Kazakh National, <coughs> Kazakh British Technical University, and a couple of others. So we have already so very so uh, solid base for humanitarian uh, um, uh, cooperation between two countries. Uh, now, with uh, uh, looking at Kazakhstan examples, so United Nations would like to uh, spread this experience to other Central Asian uh, nations, namely Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan, uh, in terms of uh, high education for for Afghan students. Um, as for the situation um, in, 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 the, in the country, let me put it in, uh, in, 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 in this way. We do support all efforts, whoever they are, uh, so they are provided by, uh, which uh, will lead to the stable uh, so peace in, in the country. Uh, just today, so it was a really so encouraging news uh, came from, uh, from, uh, from Kabul. Uh, so uh, I, I'm talking about the mission of my dear friend, Ambassador Khalil Zad. <clears throat> it's uh, based on the uh, media. It says that uh, he provided the plan uh, and establishment the transitional uh, of a transitional period to move toward to uh, for uh, the, to to move to a future political structure, define the principle of the future system, and the whole UN hosted world uh, conference in Afghanistan. We are talking about the idea of so-called inclusive uh, government. Uh, we do support this idea. We do support this idea. We do support the uh, the, the continuation. So, to make the dialogue between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban so be permanent, which will sooner or later will, be, will give some positive results. During my uh, address at the Munich uh, conference last year on Afghanistan, I proposed uh, so the Kazakhstan uh, so is ready to host any stage of negotiations, peace negotiations between the government and Taliban and our territory. And so during the, uh, our, so the contacts, uh, the recent call uh, from President Ghani to President Takayev, my president reiterated on uh, this, uh, so this stance. So we are ready to, uh, to facilitate any so again uh, uh, efforts, any attempts to bring uh, so to bring the peace closer uh, in this country. And I hope that recent, uh, of course, we do understand that the United Nations is a key uh, player in this situation. Uh, in, in the solution of uh, Afghan conflict, of course, we will support um, uh, this uh, this movement. And so, whenever so, I do hope that Ambassador Khalizat will visit uh, North Sultan in a foreseeable future, where we can exchange uh, so the views so Kazakh how Kazakhstan can so contribute in this effort. Uh, I hope we hope that uh, the peace in Afghanistan is becoming more and more uh, realistic. Just in brief, uh, this is uh, how we see situation in Afghanistan. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kaliev. I'd like now to pass the floor to, or the screen rather, to Professor Starr, who needs no introduction for this group. He is the chairman of our joint center, of course, with a long uh, record of uh, work on Afghan policy issues as well. Please, Professor Starr. Well, first, uh, let me add two points to Ambassador Kaliev's excellent report, uh, and they're both very flattering to Kazakhstan. First, uh, it should be noted that back before 9-11, uh, uh, Kazakhstan actually or organized a trade office in in. Kabul. It, it was interested in promoting trade, and this office continued. I think it continues today. In the early days, it, it, it wasn't able to accomplish much because circumstances were obviously unfavorable for it. 
today, I assume it's still there and, and active. It should be a model for other Central Asian countries. Second point uh, that uh, worth mentioning, at, at a meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, early in the, uh, after uh, almost 15 years ago now, uh, it, uh, there was a motion that was put forward by, let us say, the major powers in that organization to uh, recommend that the United States leave Afghanistan. And it was Kazakhstan that, that uh, very deftly uh, organized an effort to, to, uh, to neutralize and, and uh, have that uh, recommendation uh, rejected. So Kazakhstan and the United States, I, I should say, in, in a very cooperative way, have been involved over many years and in many ways. I have two questions that I'd like to raise. Uh, Kazakhstan, it was your ambassador, Omarov, who proposed, when he was in Washington, he proposed to the United States State Department that, that the, there be created the C5 plus one. And uh, it, this was a Kazakh initiative, but not entirely, because the Uzbeks had been very active in pursuing this under the TIFA. A decade earlier, when um, uh, 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 when when things were uh, looked to be positive on that score, uh, here's my question: Should should Afghanistan be included in the in the uh, C5 plus one, and and if so, how how to bring that about? If not, why not? Uh, a second question, a more fundamental one, is, is this. Is Afghanistan part of Central Asia or is it not? Please, Ambassador. Uh, my, 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 my answer is uh, very so simple for both questions. Yes, yes, of course. We do <laughs> believe that. <laughs> We have no any objections uh, against so Afghanistan to join C plus five one is extremely so useful uh, instrument in our so cooperation both on the bilateral uh, regional level with the United States. As for the Afghanistan as the part of Central Asia, yes, of course we we never deny it. This is this is these are very important points, and and uh, one hopes that that uh, Kazakhstan might even propose to Washington that this change in the C5 plus one arrangement be made. Uh, uh, let me raise a further question: Kaz uh, Kazakhstan, for many many years, has favored consultation and cooperation and coordination among the various countries of Central Asia. Uh, I uh, recall the president's meeting that took place in, in, in North Sultan, uh, the uh, most recent meeting of the president of all of Central Asia, but not Afghanistan yet. My question is this. Um, uh, the institutionalization of Central Asia, creating consultative bodies that enable you to interact more effectively with each other. Will this include, Kazakhstan's been supportive of this, will, will this include Afghanistan? Because if, even if Afghanistan is viewed as being part of Central Asia in, in theory, if it's not in practice, especially in the intra-Central Asia dialogues that occur, it doesn't mean anything. Okay. Uh, I do understand. So, the pretext of your question, uh, uh, Professor. Um, of course, it's uh, whenever so the ball will be on the Kazakh side, we will support uh, any so uh, institutions uh, existing or future institutions, a regional one, uh, which will include Afghanistan as a so. Uh, Full member, but again, so uh, as I said in my in my uh, so address, uh, 
I, I feel, I have a feeling that we, we, we should expect some major uh, events back in, in, uh, in Afghanistan, maybe this year. I can reveal the whole so information, so uh, in my position, but uh, let me assure that it's, uh, it's a 50-50 uh, situation um, uh, uh, based on the proposal win-win. Uh, so proposal uh, which was made uh, to, to the both uh, Ghani, uh, government, Ghani government and, and Taliban. Uh, it all depends how we they will react. And so again, proceeding from this uh, moment, if they will make a deal and the so-called inclusive government will be established uh, in Afghanistan, of course it will will lead to major so uh, some uh, changes both domestic and foreign policy and we do ex do expect that uh, so that will be so the positive reaction yes go ahead can uh, can you tell us about the extent and nature of of kazakhstan's contacts with the taliban we do uh, support uh, so uh, dialogue with all uh, sides of the complex. This is the uh, alpha and omega of any diplomacy, you know. So we do not uh, uh, make any so uh, secret diplomacy or just uh, just making just uh, so uh, making any uh, to try and to create any uh, problems to the to the government. But we have a dialogue. We do have. I, not, I, not, not direct, not direct, not me. Not direct. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, further query, uh, Kazakhstan has a, has a really quite active financial sector and Afghanistan doesn't. <laughs> they, bluntly, they do their banking offshore all too often. The, the largest funds there and, and, and investors do their banking in, in the Gulf, basically. And here you have in, in, uh, in Nur Sultan, a, a new regional financial, financial center. Uh, is, it, uh, is it going to get its, extend itself seriously into Afghanistan? It would make a big difference. Yes, you are talking about uh, international Financial Center uh, in Astana. Uh, we still use as the old uh, name, Mfetsa uh, in Russia. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, the idea is to create very so lucrative uh, business center, regional center, uh, to attract uh, so uh, foreign invest uh, investments in in Kazakhstan. Uh, during the last visit of the uh, new elected president of uh, Kyrgyzstan, Mr. Japarov, uh, we proposed him to open the office of uh, the International Financial Center in Bishkek. Uh, it's still in the process of, grow of growth, but we expect that in the next, uh, let's say, five, maybe 10 years, it will be real, so uh, uh, financial uh, one of the leading financial institutes of, of, of Central Asia. Open for every uh, country in the world, not only in the region. Uh, is it possible that a priority might be to explore investment possibilities in Afghanistan that could be channeled through, through the wonderful new financial center in North Sultan, the Astana Center? Cool. I, I, I'm not aware of the plans of the uh, of the of the, uh, the leadership of the center, but uh, I may so ask them if they have uh, any plans to uh, about so investing in Afghanistan. Let, let me raise a rather different question uh, related uh, still to trade. Uh, this is not specifically a governmental matter uh, or uh, narrowly a government governmental matter, so it would extend beyond uh, your normal uh, range. Uh, but but uh, Kazakhstan has, has several cities with developed 
chambers of commerce, developed infrastructure of business, of investment, of trade, and uh, uh, solid organizations that interact very effectively abroad. Uh, so does Afghanistan. And I'm thinking not just of Kabul, I'm thinking of, of of Herat, I'm thinking uh, of Mazar Sharif, I'm thinking of Kandahar in the south. These are uh, serious business centers, and they have an increasingly sophisticated and younger uh, uh, groups, and they are forming or have formed actual chambers of commerce. It would be an obvious relationship, it would seem to me, for these groups to have direct exchange relationships of communication, investment, and so on with their counterparts in various cities of Kazakhstan. Is that a possibility? Has anything been done in that direction? Okay, no problem. I will pass your proposals to the National uh, Chamber of Commerce at Amikian here in North Sultan. I'm pretty sure they'll be interested. That's uh, wonderful. We'll help in any way to bring that about. I've had contact with several of these business groups in Afghanistan. They're ready to go. Yeah, just an example of how we so uh, investing in Kazakhstan is the uh, participation of our uh, one of our so construction companies in the uh, the uh, railroad uh, project half Gerat, half it is a small city in, in Iran. Uh, and this is a long, uh, mm, uh, really big project which will uh, connect uh, uh, Iran with Afghanistan. And uh, our company is responsible for 40 kilometers of this uh, railroad, future freight road. Unfortunately, they were supposed to finish it last year, but due to the COVID and some security issues, they postponed the completion of the project uh, till the end of this year, just for information. Dr. Cornell, I, I want to yield the floor to anyone else, perhaps, among our viewers. Thank you. Thank you. First, uh, there are questions that are beginning to come in. I would urge uh, others to pose their questions on the function, Q&A function. In the meantime, Ambassador Kalia, um, a question I would have to you is regarding the coordination of uh, efforts between Central Asian states. Our institute has long thought of uh, trying to make a kind of an audit we haven't done it yet, but we're still interested in this idea of mapping what the different states in Central Asia are doing with regard to Afghanistan. Uh, you have talked about what Kazakhstan is doing, but uh, there are, of course, things happening in Tajikistan, in Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, even in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, is this uh, an area that you think there is an opportunity for greater cooperation and coordination among your or with your counterparts? Because I think other regional states have special representatives for Afghanistan uh, so that you can maximize the benefits of your work rather than overlapping. Um, Kazakhstan is a leading economy of the region. It's a world recognizable fact. And of course we do, we do so uh, have a very, ex very excellent uh, so uh, relations with our, all our neighbors. Uh, uh, maybe you're aware that every single country of Central Asia has the same uh, position, special representative for Afghanistan. I have very good uh, so uh, relations with all of them. We exchange on the regular basis uh, the views, as well as uh, with my uh, counterpart back in Moscow, Ambassador Kabulov. And, uh, there are two, uh, you know, Kazakhstan is a, uh, let's, uh, let's call it not frontline country in uh, towards uh, Afghanistan. So we do not share the border. Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, this is two countries who share the border, who has the major so, security issues, keeping in mind the big uh, so ethnic so diaspora. Tajik and Uzbek uh, constantly in Afghanistan, which also uh, another so uh, the issue uh, um, of uh, concern uh, uh, for both countries, and uh, in this uh, so look well after so the changes of the presidency in in Uzbekistan, our relations so start to develop you know, very rapidly. 
uh, so manner. And uh, so there was a visit of uh, President Erdogan to Kazakhstan. They met with President uh, recently in, uh, in Turkestan, South Kazakhstan. And so there was a big, very big, really, so plan of uh, our bilateral so, uh, cooperation, mostly trade cooperation. Of course, we do support each other on the, on the regional uh, issues, uh, to, uh, so, uh, security uh, issues. We, we share the same views, how we can deal with the uh, regional uh, security issues. Thank you very much. Now, there are a question. First question from our audience is from Olesia Dovgaliuk, who asks, uh, what is your take on the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as a platform for member states, including Kazakhstan, to cooperate on Afghanistan, not only on security issues such as rats, but also <coughs> trade and economic connectivity? SEO is, a, I think, it's a major so uh, platform for uh, regional and maybe even global uh, trade and uh, security issues. We use it and we do ex exchange. The, uh, so uh, we have a uh, so-called working group uh, in the framework of SEO. I'm the part of this working group and we exchange the views with our colleagues uh, from SEO uh, member countries. And uh, of course, uh, I do believe that we have the the common view on the situation uh, on Afghanistan. So the peace, uh, there is no alternative the, to the peace negotiations. Since you mentioned the peace negotiations, here is another relevant question on that subject from Mr. Ajmal Shirzai uh, that mentions how Kazakhstan is keen for inclusive government in Afghanistan, as you discussed. Uh, but the question is that if the Taliban resist on their position to uh, break their relationship with Al-Qaeda and other extremist groups, uh, would there be any implication for Kazakhstan's position towards Afghanistan? Uh, I guess building on Mr. Shirzai's question is, uh, do we see, I, I understand that we see the Taliban as part of a solution, but do we, will, will, what would Kazakhstan do if the Taliban turn out to be a roadblock to a solution? I can't make uh, any comments. Uh, so, for uh, so Taliban's, but there was a so, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure they, they they already heard a lot about the uh, all negative consequences which may occur in case if they will keep or so. Or, in case they have it, it's not proved yet. Uh, the, any uh, any relations, any cooperation, support to the uh, terrorist organizations. Hmm. We also have a question from our colleague in Peshawar, Professor Shabir Khan at the uh, University of Peshawar, who asks uh, whether other peace processes for Afghanistan, such as the Moscow format, the three plus one support or others, um, if they support the ongoing peace process under the Doha agreement, I suppose, to interpret Professor Khan's question, the uh, I think the issue is: Are there too many platforms? Or do you think that these platforms are are uh, are um, comprehensive or support each other in a way? There is no word too much uh, platforms when we are talking about the peace. Whenever so, it may be so one, two, five hundreds. Or well, if they, they will move us closer to the peace, we support of them. Well, whenever so, the uh, Russian Foreign Affairs will uh, invite me for the next round of Moscow uh, format. I'll be in Moscow. Uh, if it will be Turkey, Istanbul uh, process, I'll be in, in Ankara. So, just Thank you. So you, you, you view them as, as complementary to one another and supportive of the same. Absolutely. Approach. Absolutely. Thank you. We also have a question from Victoria Hu, who asks, uh, uh, how do you view the role of youth in the region, especially in, in SCO countries, in the uh, role of building peace and prosperity in Afghanistan? Well, SCO countries may be so the, uh, the key donors of the post-conflict uh, process of rebuilding, of uh, reconstruction of uh, Afghanistan economy. We are talking about the transportation, infrastructure projects, so just for, uh, they will need the money for, to revive the economy. 
uh, for reintegration to the uh, to the region to the regional projects, and we have a lot of them. Thank you, Professor Starr. Do you have any comments on these questions that were just raised? I have two. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Very interesting. <clears throat> uh, first is this: uh, uh, Kazakhstan has uh, been uh, uh, supportive of the uh, rail link that would that would bring uh, uh, across the Amur Darya and eventually end up in Chabahar in Iran. Um, mm -hmm. That would be. Uh, one route, and the second route would take you either to, either to uh, well, take you to Pakistan and possibly to the new port at Gwadar. Uh, many people uh, who are not about to judge between these two projects uh, support both of them on the grounds that this will uh, advance competition between the two ports and, and therefore drive down prices for Afghanistan and for all the countries of Central Asia, including Kazakhstan. Where is Kazakhstan on the Gwadar issue? And is it equally supportive of the route to that, uh, to, to, to the route that will take you there, or for that matter, to, to other ports in, in Pakistan? You, we, uh, you should be uh, we, uh, well aware of the, uh, that Kazakhstan is a uh, key part of the one one way one belt project uh, which is uh, uh, for the time being is a major so uh, link between uh, Asia and Europe uh, for the time being so we are very satisfied with uh, the fact that we are part of this project which is backed up by the uh, by by uh, EU, by uh, People's Republic of China. And uh, for the time we are looking on what um, uh, another so uh, alternative uh, uh, so north-south uh, transportation routes. Just let me remind you that Kazakhstan sponsored the uh, uh, railroad uh, network, uh, which uh, uh, brought, uh, which will in future, of course, which will bring Kazakhstan closer to the Gulf, uh, the Persian Gulf. As I'm, I, I understand that, and it's all very good. <clears throat> but my specific question has to do with a link that would connect Kermes with with uh, Pakistan. That is now the subject of tripartite development, Afghanistan. Like, yes. why not quadripartite? Why not? Uh, and by the way, uh, it should be stressed that when uh, now President Takayev, uh, then Foreign Minister Takayev, came to uh, Kabul back in 2006, the, the purpose of his visit was actually to discuss exactly these routes. Exactly. No, no, uh, it doesn't, whatever you, as I say, it doesn't mean that we do not support. No, we do support. We have on the table the uh, trilateral so, uh, uh, transportation agreement, uh, agreement. so it's Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, and Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Afghanistan. It's all about all these uh, issues. I understand, but, yeah. but as of now, Kazakhstan seems either to be indifferent or uh, indifferent to a, a second route uh, through Afghanistan that would create two ports, a, a second port uh, for Central Asia. After all, the link from the link from Termez to, Pak to, to a port in Pakistan, Gwadar, is not part of the uh, of the uh, Belt and Road project. It's not there. Yes, yes, it is. But uh, I do believe that we can join this project at any stage. Whenever so, when, whenever we will consider it's in our interests. Let me formulate oh, this. Excellent. Well, and and one one final and a very different very different sphere, but but an important one, and that is, uh, uh, well, the informal sphere. And I have in mind sports and culture. Um, I. I'm not aware of any uh, cross Amudarya sporting activity, and yet Kazakhstan 
as a very active sporting city uh, in, in many sports. And I'm wondering, is, is it possible that Kazakhstan and, and the, its neighbors in north of the Amur Darya could start including Afghanistan in their region-wide sports competition? <laughs> of course, <laughs> no problem. So whenever so, we have a lot of requests from uh, uh, from Afghanistan. So they want it. I, I think that yes, I think that's exactly. It's, uh, yes, during the COVID, it was medical equipment, so uh, medical supply, whatever. So we tried. So we sent last uh, last summer we sent fifty two wagons, carriages uh, to Afghanistan, fifty two carriages, mostly food. Because it was a flood, uh, flood in, in, in Kabul. It was a so problems in Girat and uh, so Mazari Sharif, uh, and so on. So, so it was a you know like in a in a blink of eye we we sent this uh, and uh, our Uzbek so uh, partners are very helpful to uh, to pass this uh, uh, this carriage without any this uh, custom bureaucracy. Now, now where would the initiative? in Kazakhstan arise for broadening sports competition, including Afghanistan? No, well, so it's a, for, for us, it's a dream to host the uh, Winter Olympic Games in Almaty. Aha. Yes, of course. And we will be happy to invite uh, so Afghanistan to be part of it. Well, to accomplish that, it probably is necessary to have a lot of smaller trips of, of individual teams. I hope that happens. Oh, of course. Dr. Cornell. Yes, Ambassador Kaliev, you know, our institute many years ago, we haven't done it for some time, but we spent some serious uh, energies researching the issue of the drug trade in Afghanistan. Uh, could you speak to this issue and how Kazakhstan is uh, obviously was for a long time a, a one of the preferred transit zones for some of the trafficking that was trying to be the northern route. And I know your government has been working to, to stop this. Could you assess uh, your efforts in this regard as well as your cooperation with Afghan colleagues on counter narcotics? Yes, uh, it's a big issue. So Kazakhstan, uh, Afghanistan was this and Unfortunately, will be in the foreseeable future the major uh, the producer of uh, heroin. And uh, again, unfortunately, Kazakhstan is one of the uh, transit countries uh, for the stuff for narcotics. Uh, we do cooperate with Afghanistan, we do cooperate with uh, all uh, so the Central Asian countries, with uh, this global police network. So uh, from time to time, so our police uh, make statements about the seizure of this major so uh, so, uh, so narcotics uh, uh, by different uh, ways. Unfortunately, the, uh, uh, so uh, whenever so we try and just to increase our efforts uh, to stop the the the, uh, uh, the drug trafficking the. Drug lords, they invented more and more so very so sophisticated so ways to 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 do oh, so, you know uh, to, so, so transiting uh, through our territory and uh, with the help of the United States and with the European Union, we we trying to uh, to block it and uh, it's the most effective measures uh, in our so borders mostly. Thank you very much. Are no. there any further questions or comments from either Professor Starr or other members of our audience? Well, first of all, I want to say what a pleasure it is to have Ambassador Kaliev with us. Uh, it's it's uh, an opportunity to hear directly uh, things that are often heard only indirectly. So we're really grateful and want to thank you. But I, I want to touch on two further points. One is, that in Kazakhstan's effort to diversify its economy, one of the rising stars, and certainly a rising star in the eyes of foreign investors, especially investors here in the United States, is agriculture. And, mm -hmm. and I, I assume 
that that in the very fair, near future, uh, Kazakhstan is going to be a major force in the world of, of uh, agricultural production and and uh, development. So my question is, has there yet been any effort by Kazakhstan, either alone or with partner countries, to foster agriculture, modern agriculture in Afghanistan? Um, we have a national program for uh, uh, developing of agricultural sector. Uh, national one. Uh, it's a billions and billions of dollars. Uh, the idea is to be self-sufficient in terms of uh, so uh, domestic consumption and half of the at least half of our so production to be exported to the neighboring countries, uh, ideally to the European Union. So we already so started so uh, supplies. Uh, it's mostly. Uh, Meat, uh, meat products, uh, uh, grain, wheat uh, to, to Russia. It's a traditional Chinese uh, new market. Our traditional uh, markets is uh, Near East, Iran, Egypt, uh, Afghanistan, of course. As for the any projects uh, in Afghanistan, well, uh, so investors will never come to the uh, to the places which has no guarantee of stability. Uh, you know, uh, so whenever so we will have, a, 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 as I was told by by uh, our local businessmen, whenever they will have a firm guarantees that the invest investments are safe, they will so be led to be in Afghanistan. Well, you could reverse that and say that there will never be invest, there will never be peace without investment. Uh, our businessmen are very conservative. You know, it's it's, it's uh, takes a lot of time. Uh, you know, it's a lot of effort. But is this an area where government programs might might do something? In other words, to, uh, to foster the development of agriculture in one region, and then nothing, the nothing I'm aware of. I'm planning to visit uh, Kabul in uh, this spring, and to talk with officials with. Uh, local businessmen community just to understand what are their needs. Uh, we, we already have a list of uh, the wishes and uh, requests, and but I need to talk with people, you know, tete -a -tete, uh, just to understand uh, what are the real needs for the country. And of course, the major problem is logistics. Yes. Uh, because uh, it's, uh, you should cross two borders, uh, custom levies, and it will, uh, it's uh, at, the, at the end. This, for example, grain became real so expensive. And uh, which means uh, uh, so lowering the volume of trade and so on. We have to find uh, so the three party solutions. So uh, let, uh, I'm talking about Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and uh, Afghanistan, you know. so. We're talking about Afghanistan. Let's make the uh, so the, the customs at least for five, ten years zero, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. It will be the future. So I help the Afghanistan stuff like that. I have a question for you, Doctor Star. Since you are uh, so, it's a rare opportunity for me to see you. <laughs> uh, what do you think about uh, we have now new administration? Uh, uh, they talk a pause, yeah, uh, saying that uh, we need a, a review last year agreement with Taliban. What uh, will be so uh, uh, next steps from your point of view? What kind of alternatives? I think there? this was largely to gain time, um, and and it will be a few months, but. Uh, uh, it doesn't seem to me that there is a very wide range of alternative positions. Mm -hmm. Whatever, wherever they come out, I mm -hmm. think it will be fairly within a fairly narrow spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would be very much surprised if they mm -hmm. were cut off. Uh, at the same time, I, I, I think, unfortunately, 
uh, I would have to be surprised if they if they uh, build on some of the opportunities that have been so laboriously created and with such a huge investment over many years. I personally, I personally uh, feel very strongly that the United States should persist in Afghanistan along with Afghanistan's neighbors, including Kazakhstan, because I think the signs on the longer term are very positive. There is a new generation of very talented men and women who are carrying out honest business transactions, who are developing the country, who are committed to the country. They have vast resources. They have wonderful location. I think all the signs point up. And I think I'm, I'm hoping that the new administration will take this into account and take a longer view and not cut and run. Great. Thank you so much. Really so positive uh, so message. Uh, it will be uh, so, uh, of course, it's an uh, interest of all of us, including uh, so my country, just to see uh, clear and loud so, uh, message from the United States. So the deadline, uh, the May is coming soon, just uh, two months left, yeah, March and April, before the uh, withdrawal so, uh, of the uh, foreign troops from Afghanistan, according to the to the to the uh, uh, last year agreement. If it will be so prolonged, will they make a deal? No, it's uh, you see. Uh, so for the time being, Kazakhstan and other so uh, countries of the region, we are just uh, you know, we are just watching. Of course, uh, and uh, what, what, what's what's going to be next? Of course, we were following the uh, so uh, so requests uh, from different sides, different parties, just to be active uh, uh, players in the in the process, and we do whatever we can do. So we what we do the best uh, what we what we can do, uh, but uh, we are very optimistic about the future of Afghanistan as an integral part of Central Asia. Well, bravo for you. I, I, of course, it's wonderful to hear that. My, my broad impression is that the entire external world, including Afghanistan's neighbors, has failed to appreciate adequately the existence and development of a modern sector in Afghanistan. It is there. It has people, personnel, skills, uh, resources, and the faster we start working with them, uh, 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 the better. And with regard to Kazakhstan, I would say as soon as possible to organize meetings of chambers of commerce on both sides. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll keep it in my mind. Yes, uh, I, will, I will talk with, uh, with, the, with the people from our also national uh, chamber about that one. Maybe I'll take with them uh, during my visit to, to, to Kabul. Wonderful, Why not? wonderful. Well, we all wish you success in your very important work. Uh, Dr. Cornell? Thank you very much. We are just about running out of time. So we would like to thank you, Ambassador Khalif, and you, Professor Starr, for this discussion, which I think was very useful. And we will be back with some further discussions in the not too distant future, both on issues related to Afghanistan and Central Asia connections but also to other matters in the foreign policies of Kazakhstan and other Central Asian states. Um, Monsieur Mikhailova, anything from you to end our meeting? Thank you so much for Mr. Khalif and Dr. Starr. <clears throat> Thank you very much, dear audience. It was like um, a start of our series of seminars dedicated to the 30th anniversary of our beloved country, Kazakhstan. So hopefully we will see you again in the future. Thank you very much. Dr. Thank Kurnos, much. thank you so much. It was a big privilege for me uh, to be part of today's conference. Dr. Starr, call me anytime if you need me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ambassador Khalil. Thank you. All, All the best. best.